So I've just finished one of the most enjoyable meals that I think I've ever made for myself out in the woods. And if you're interested in knowing more about that meal, I'll put a link to that video up in one of these corners at the end of this video and in the video description below. And I think you're gonna find it's worth checking out. But how do you follow up on a great meal like that? Well, with a cup of coffee, of course. So a great meal deserves a great cup of coffee, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna do something different today, something I have not shown you before, something I don't think I've seen anybody else use in the woods, and that is a Vietnamese fin. If you're interested in knowing what a Vietnamese fin is and how it's used for making coffee, keep watching. So what is a fin and how is it used for making coffee? Well, a fin is a very traditional Vietnamese way of making coffee. It is simply just a metal filter that you put your coffee in, that you pour your water in, allow it to drain through into the cup below. It doesn't get much simpler than this. This one is made of stainless steel, and I think most of them are made of stainless steel or aluminum or other materials. They come in a variety of sizes, and one of the best things about them, they're cheap. I mean, they're cheap. I don't think this one cost me $2 on AliExpress. You can find them on Amazon and AliExpress. I found one in one of the, our uh, thrift stores recently. So uh, yeah, they're, they're just a great and different way of making coffee. So, so simple. So that's what we're gonna be using today. And I'll put some links where I found it and I'll put the weight of this because that's the other thing, extremely lightweight. And I'll give you a few close-ups now and then talk about how it's used. So actually, let's talk about how it's used. I'm gonna be making some black coffee because that's the way, of course, I enjoy my coffee. The traditional way of having coffee in Vietnam is to have it on ice, cold coffee on ice, mixed with condensed milk, a lot of condensed milk. So this would be pour, this would be set up over a glass of condensed milk, and uh, it could be the condensed milk already mixed in with the ice and then allowed to drip through, and I'll explain more about that in a minute, and then stirred through so that you get the coffee and the condensed milk being used. I watched a video recently to explain why condensed milk, and I think this is more about uh, the tradition of using it than it is the current reality. Uh, condensed milk, as you know, is extremely, extremely sweet. It comes out thicker than most syrups do. And uh, the, the, the reason given was is that regular milk was not something that could be found often in Vietnam. Now, it could be to do, had to do at one point, I don't think this is currently the, this, the situation, with refrigeration. So milk has to be kept refriger refrigerated. Condensed milk doesn't. It can sit on the shelf in a closed container for years, likely, you know, well, there are expiry dates, right? Okay, so that's the tradition behind using a fin like this in Vietnam. And I understand that some device similar to this has been used in Southeast Asia and surrounding areas for quite a long time. So it's not that this is unique to Vietnam only. But what is it? Well, there are three components to a fin to start with, what looks like a little tiny coffee cup. And if you look on the bottom, there are holes perforated on the bottom. I can show you from both sides, holes perforated on the bottom where the uh, coffee will drop through. And literally you just put the amount of coffee you want inside of this vessel here. Then there's this piece, sometimes called a gravity filter or a gravity press, and that will sit on top of the coffee before you pour your water in, and it keeps the coffee from bubbling all over the place and, uh, and just floating through the surface. And then there's this little lid. Now the lid serves two purposes. One, when you're making the coffee, you put the lid on top to retain some heat as the coffee is draining through, and when you're finished, you can lay this on the table and put this on top just to keep any residual coffee from making a mess on the table. The one thing about using a fin is that it is, well, it's easy to set up, it's easy to get going, but it takes time for the coffee to pour through. Depending on the size of it, depending on the amount of coffee you put in, it can take between five and eight minutes, maybe even as long as 10 minutes, again, depending on the size. Uh, my experience is five minutes or so for the amount of coffee that I'm going to use with this. So the one downside for this, at least the way I feel here in Canada, is this will work great during the summertime, uh, maybe not so much during the winter time, if, especially if you want your coffee hot. You're going to, at least in the winter, I would do this on top of an insulated mug of some type to keep the coffee hot because it will take 
five minutes or so for the coffee to drip through. Now, you know, that's not bad because when you use a French press, you let it set in the French press for about four minutes to five minutes before you plunge it down and pour your coffee. Uh, you do something very similar with the AeroPress. So once again, it's not that much different. And even with a pour over, that takes three or four minutes for the coffee to pour through. I guess it's just that this is exposed to colder air and, uh, you know, it might cool off a little quicker. All right. Enough talk about the fin and its history and how it's used. Now let me demonstrate it. First lesson to share with you about using a fin is I did not check the size of the mug with the fin before I brought it out today. And uh, you need a mug that this is going to sit on. Now you can see it does, but it's so close to the same size that I risk having that tip over when I pour the coffee in. So easy fix for that is I just split a small stick out and I'll just look like that and place the fin on top and then it's supported and I don't have to worry about it dumping out. All right, so the fin, Again, you have the main body of it. Let's see if I can share a little bit with you once again. Just very simple, very light, perforated holes. I know coffee aficionados are looking right now and saying, there's going to be fines coming through that, Mark. You're going to end up with a little bit of silt in the bottom of your coffee. Yes, you will. Uh, yes, you will, but not very much. Not near as much as you think you might. Put your coffee in, put the press on top, and uh, then pour your water on top. Let me share how that's done. So to begin to get this ready. So one thing that you can do with this is, because this does not hold a lot of coffee, is make it a little strong. I'm going to put in three tablespoons today, and that'll be a little strong for the amount of water, but I can add some hot water to the cup after the fact. So one two, three, oh yes, and this goes without saying, the better the quality of coffee, the better the resulting cup of coffee. And it's hard for me to find anything that beats the Rampage coffee. And I, of course, as I've mentioned before, I like the fact that it's Canadian. I like the fact that it is fresh roasted and shipped right away. I like the fact that uh, they use the highest quality coffees, not just fair trade, but direct trade with the farm itself. It's all organic. Hard to beat. And if you want to know more about Rampage Coffee, I do have a full video that I can link at the end, of course, talking much more about it. I made that video quite a while ago, and if this says anything, I'm still using their coffee. Okay, so that aside, one of the things you want to do now is give it a little shake around to level the coffee out. I've seen people do this, which is to drop that in and give it a spin. One thing you don't want to do is press it down. You don't want the coffee pressed in and compact it. You can see a little bit of coffee does go through the filter, but that's, once again, not an issue. Anyone who drinks cowboy coffee is used to straining it between their teeth anyway. All right, my kettle is hot. Actually very hot. I think I'll put a glove on for this. And uh, what I've seen recommended is that the way that this little gravity press device is built, it has the little handle piece that is to pour directly on top of that. It'll tend to distribute the water a little bit rather than having all the water go in on one side and lift it up. Now, your first little bit of water is just that, a little bit of water, that much, and leave it set. 15, 20 seconds or so. So what am I doing that for? So I'm allowing the coffee to bloom. If it's nice and freshly roasted, sometimes you'll actually see bubbles coming up. If you pour too much in too quickly, then that thing is, the little gravity press is gonna flip over on its side. Not the end of the world, it's just better if it doesn't. And I'm allowing the coffee to soak up and swell underneath there. So a little bit is draining through and that's no big deal. So I just want to allow the coffee to soak up a little bit of water, give it a, that amount of time. And now very slowly fill the fin up to the top like this. Now I've used metal filters before and one of the concerns was just how quickly the coffee goes through. Um, it doesn't with this, it is slow. It's quite slow in fact. Put that on top 
And now I'll just have to wait. That's the only thing I can do. That's just the hardest part is just waiting the five minutes for the coffee to filter through. And when it does, I'll bring it back. So what's funny about using a fin is that uh, I checked it a couple of times and I said, it doesn't look like it's going down. It's not going down. But it was. It was going down. You can see it's all gone through. It's all gone into the bottom. Like I said, not a lot of coffee in the cup, but that's not a problem because uh, I put my kettle back on. Didn't need much more water, but I'll probably put in, as long as I don't burn my finger here, ouch. Oh, another two or three ounces of water, just enough to give it a little bit more volume in the cup. But since I had made it strong to start with, then uh, of course it just comes into the right, consider or the right amount, I guess the right flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna reposition the camera and we'll give this a taste test and we'll talk about the fin just a little bit more. So I came down to the water's edge to enjoy my coffee and just look out over the water and I'm just noticing it is starting to sprinkle a little, little bit, which is, um, I mean, that's nice. A nice spring or summertime light rain is great, except when you have camera gear that doesn't have an umbrella or something on top of it and you weren't expecting the rain. So I'm going to have to move this part of the video along just to protect the camera. Uh, okay, so the fin. Let me know, have you seen these before? Have you used them before? Uh, maybe you're from Vietnam or been to Vietnam and you have seen the, or have used these yourselves. Uh, if you have any hints or any recipes for using the Vietnamese fin for making coffee, I've also heard it pronounced fin, 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 P-H-I-N. Either way, uh, yeah, so share with us what you know about the fiend and whether or not you've used Let me know if you're going to find one and try it. It's worth it, really. For the cost of these things, it's worth finding one of these things and giving it a try. It makes a good cup of coffee. It's strong. It's stronger than you might think. But, of course, when you use three tablespoons of coffee, it's going to be a little bit strong. But because of that slow seep through the coffee, it's extracting all the strength and all the flavor. And that's the only thing about using it. It takes, well, I think that was probably about seven minutes to run this coffee, this water through the coffee. And I had a little bit of water I could add to it just to top it up a little bit, give it uh, some more volume. But, oh my, what a great cup of coffee. What a great way to end the day for me. Now I have to pack up before it really starts to rain <laughs> and get myself on the trail. So any comments, any questions about using the fin for making coffee or anything else for that matter, please put it in the comments section below. But otherwise, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.